Sunday afternoon in the BBL Championship. Lots to play for. Two very evenly matched teams. It should be quite the game. It is Glasgow Rocks against the Surrey Scotchers. First possession of the game falls into the hands of Surrey. And Timmy Hicks in the hands of the ball went to Connor Cashew. Drives into his move. A backward swap with Timmy Hicks. Ogden be up against his former team. The step back does not fall. But he gets the trip to the line. And you know, that has been an interesting switch, you know, giving Cashew full reign as, as a playmaker to try and run things and push the tempo. And you know, he's a player who can get it done in so many ways, you know, great passer, great finisher, great rebounder, you know, can get the steals. So I think that, you know, it's, it's one of those situations from a club perspective, Hicks is there, can also cause so much damage. You know, we've seen it in the past, what he could have done, essentially carried the team into the playoffs the last time. So, yeah, I think it's a really good uh, one-two punch. Short the second attempt from two of the be. Has come off the bench the last five league games. You know, Theo always loves coming back to Glasgow and playing as well. He's, he's always up for the challenge. The game, the first meeting between these two teams back in January. Really, as we've seen a lot, as we've talked about this season, <laughs> stepping out of bounds. It's one of those situations where you just literally have to shoot. You, <laughs> if you dribble, because a lot of players tend to put their foot back when they take that dribble. Uh, it's not too much bother. Cut shot, killing in his way. Jumper, Lacey James is short. Second bite of the cherry. Macklemore drains the three. Smooth as you like. That's those second chance opportunities that, that you know, the Rocks want to clean up. James, a big factor, such a good offensive rebounder, something which they lacked early in the season. Here's Murray for the three, gets the Rocks off the mark today. Clearly they're still, still feeling it from Friday night. Yeah, it's quite shooting performance as Oga Dengby goes inside and this time gets the score and that's the second foul on Bansour's in Always fact they're saying no trouble that's the referees that consulted there and Sarge gets the reprieve yeah they're not shooting performance in the second half against Manchester something to behold they just had a quick shooting practice yesterday rather than a full practice and I'll be curious to see how deep we go with the bench today Second half of that game on Friday, I think they start in five stayed on for the, the entire of the second half. So we do have Mark Ruddy back of course who's you see on the right of your picture on the stationary bike. Still working his way back to full fitness from the Achilles issue that he suffered. Ruby Dingby again off the glass. Go to the line to shoot two. I like the aggression by Theo right now, but I just feel from a Rock's perspective, Van Sors has to, he has to get in, in, in the lane, take one in the chest. With the charge is there for him to take. Well, Van Sors second foul. You know, talking to Theo before the game, you know, shooting has been a struggle at times this season, but some of the spots that normally he's been very good at, like the corner three haven't fallen, but said, you know, I still back myself. I still think I'm coming good. I'm not going to lack the confidence to keep going and being aggressive and taking those shots. And that's great to hear because he definitely put, you know, he's one of them who puts the work in. He's a very, very hard worker. And I think if you're willing to put that work in, that gives you that confidence to back yourself that you know it can be done, you can make those shots. Fraser Malcolm checks in in place of Van Sowers. Bait line went for the up and under Bunyan step back. And as he did so, he got fouled. First foul against Macklemore. He's worked his way back into the rotation. You know, there was a th school of thought mid season that if they needed to make a change, he would be the man to make way, but has moved back into the starting lineup. Flourishing so far. Bunyan makes his first. 
rarely misses from the free throw line. 94% on the season. Almost a guarantee, two of two there. It's within one. It's funny as a player, I actually can never remember Johnny really getting to the free throw line. <laughs> He makes the most of it. When he gets here, yeah, he knocks it down. This much here in the post. Delflo comes for help. Up and under. As the shot clock expires. I'm just going to confer. Oh, James Basket is gone. I think it has. Turned over there. Hicks on the break. Cool as you like. Attention there. Five point gap. Hicks with such quick hands. Really, really good. The click. The boys. Just a smart player. Murray for three. Doesn't go this time. Exception at the other end. Delft to his right, throws it in. Green the other night, mainly on the perimeter. There, easy score for James. And I, I, I do think that James is such a versatile big. You know, he can face up, can shoot the ball, really quick, attacking off the dribble. You know, Delft's going to have to contain him. his way into the paint off the glass makes it Christian Keeling smooth finish there smooth first score of the game speed here early on but then we can't get the effective rebound to go we'll go for it again second time unlucky Theo's getting himself into those positions he just has to you know that's something that he, he should be making Keeling at speed two quick baskets for the American a one point game. Hex guarded by Bunyan. Takes the foul. Freely admitted. Checking in. And a double substitution for the first time this evening. Dane Wanless. And the impressive young Cam Hildreth. by Glasgow. Almost some defensive duties against Murray. Bunyan for three. Oh, it's Hildreth at you know, speed. You know we both thought as soon as Johnny caught that was in. <laughs> <laughs> it was almost a reflex the other night, yeah. wasn't it? I'd say he would settle for more of this in tonight. Your best performance defensively. Malcolm for three. Picks with the floater into the lane. That's a tough matchup for uh, Bunyan. I think that you know, as, as a player, a little bit slower defensively, you don't want Hicks to get downhill at speed. But it's, it's kind of baiting him to kind of slow him down at the same time. As soon as he kind of ga gathers momentum, especially with a little ball screen there, it's, it'll be really tough for, for Bunyan. Up against James in the post. Wiggles underneath almost, gets it back. Great patience there. Ron Delph. And at the end, the foul is called against James. Picks up his first. Delph will go to the line. He's been making 62% this season. Doesn't actually get a lot to the foul line. Yeah, and I, I think it's because of his game's quite finesse. You know, he kind of it's a little fadeaway jump shots, pick and pop kind of plays, or it's dunks at the rim. Uh, so that's why I said when you're playing against a guy like a Lacey James, who's a little bit smaller but really, really strong, it could be really, really hard to battle. But with his length, if he can get his spot, work on his touch, I think it could be a good day for Dale. There, full for Tony Hicks. He got hit in the head there. <laughs> 
pressure early on against Bunyan Keeling. Long range, goes into the hands of Cam Hildreth. He has one gear which is fast. You've been impressed by Hildreth in his brief BBL stint. Yeah, I just, I, I just I love, you know, for, for such a young player, he, he knows his game so well. You know, he, he knows how to get these spots. He's got a little crossover, uh, right to left. You know, get, gets to the free throw line. You know, we, we talk about the, the one for is maybe his three point shot, and I think maybe it's just more to do with uh, actually knowing when to shoot the three opposed to uh, just shooting when, when, he, when he feels like. Kasha with his first bucket in this contest. He feels three will be one area that he'll look to work on when he heads to Wake Forest in the summertime. Basket there. Yeah, such a terrific opportunity being a university that's produced so many good players. Tim Duncan foremost amongst all of them. And yeah, I guess he is the bright young hope of British basketball right now, which is a lot of pressure on his shoulders. Well, Wake Forest was, my, was actually my favourite favourite team. Uh, obviously, the, the late great Skip Prosser uh, used to come over who, when he was at Xavier, then he moved to Wake Forest. Chris Paul was there at the time, so it was a po college I used to follow. Okay? So I'm, I'm, I'm really looking forward to see what he does there in the ACC. James with a score. 6 2 1 for the Scorchers. Puts their lead at 5 with 3 minutes left in this opening period. against James, one fall. Great defense, really good defense there. Like I said, James is really physical, so it, it makes it really hard for Delft to, to get close to the basket. So it's him matching up again. This time James looking to pass out. Six on the shot clock, Hicks splits the defense off the glass, gets it, tough score, Tony oh. Hicks. That was nice, just his change of speed there. So run for Surrey. Bunyan. No room to manoeuvre tonight. Gets the shot off though. Keeling with a follow up off the glass. Gets the score. And um, we'll go for the bonus. And always good to see when your guards follow up for boards. <laughs> Evan Waltz checking in for Surrey. As Connor Cashaw takes a breather. You talk about guards going in for boards. Cashaw just subbing out there, one of the best in the game. I mean, Cortez Edwards, the two really impressive rebounders. Yeah, Cashaw, six boards at night. As Keelan gets the three point play. go. Keeling cut through. He doesn't get the finish though. Did all the work. Fraser Malcolm in his way. So crafty. It looks to me right now that the, the Glasgow Rocks are essentially kind of packing the paint, trying to make it really hard for for Surrey to go anywhere. The only issue is when they have had their drives, they've been getting to the free throw line. So it's just a little bit re less reaching from the Glasgow Rocks and more kind of putting your body in the way. Mark Coetta in in place of Gareth Murray for the last 92 seconds of this first period as Hildreth has made just over 50% from the line in his BBL stint. Converts his first. just four times a night. So much potential out as he knocks down the second. David Impondo gets his first minutes on the court tonight for Glasgow. As Fraser Malcolm takes a breather. Here is the Frenchman. 
the three. Short out. Dealt with the board. Put back. Drops in. Good board. Dealt. You're watching a Pond Pondo shot. It looks like he's just releasing the ball just a little bit too quick. You know, he's not, he's not uh, shooting at his peak. Again, another young player who has so much potential. One less for three. Scramble underneath and it will be a rocks ball. And can then be returning to the fray in place of Dean Wanless. I must admit too, you know, those study scorchers are, are down there with um, Manchester Giants for the, you know, points and points conceded. Um, but there's been a real shift. Creole on his little little rant on his interview, but they're, they're really looking like they're getting more in the passing lanes, less middle drive, more defensive intent. Under the traffic, couldn't finish. Delph with yet another offensive board one fall. Gets it back again. Well, look at that one. Shot clock is off. 15 seconds remaining. Ball in the hands of Cam Hildreth. Now Tony Hicks, guarded by Impondo. Middle is free. Defensive foul is called for the push off. Is that his second as well? Yeah. yeah second. Really First foul against Hicks. It's really interesting there. I saw you know, Ogan Dengbe was on, on Bunyan. Uh, I was wondering what he could have played. Five seconds left here. Keeling accelerates, gets it through. But Evan Waltz did just enough to put off the American at the end of the first quarter here. It is Surrey Scorchers leading the Glasgow Rocks 22 points to eight. The, you know, the ability to actually see a dream, you know, this is actually possible, and here's the opportunity to do so. And I think that's such a such a big thing, you know. Even the stuff he did with the exchange students going over to the, over to the states, it, just, it gave them a dream that they could actually achieve something in the sport. Very great memories of the very affable Danny Kay. Second quarter underway here. Surrey with a four point lead. These two teams, of course, the beaten semi finalists in the season's BBL trophy. Dearly loved to make up grind. Sneak into that eighth spot in the playoff race. Still time. Hildreth at speed. Circus shot at the end, but <laughs> he actually didn't need that. He, you know, he was, and I guess that's the presence of Dale. Keeling for three, and it's a one-point ball game. Big shot there. Yeah, I said Dale's shot blocking ability is enough to put a lot of people off, and that you know it, that doesn't go in the stat sheet. Those things go missed. The changing of shots, you know. But Walsh in traffic, skip shot one fall underneath the offensive rebound gathered by Lacey James. See what the call from the official line. Yes, he is. And Bunyan, I think. Gonna head to the line. Second foul against Johnny Bunyan. James, you look at it, and just at two points in the last meeting between these two teams, but he's really come into his own over the last five, ten games. And another player who regularly feature on Kieran's disgusting ducks lust. Uh -huh. and three throw though. Ducks mid range. Deflected by Coetti, still has it. Bullet pass. Here's Hildreth for three. Short on that one. 
It was quite a funny one there because I, I felt that Hildreth didn't want to shoot. He, his feet weren't set, they weren't ready, and you know, he turned down another open look to try and force the pass. So that could be a confidence thing as well. We'll see as the game goes. When the ball's in his hands, it's a completely different story. Oh, sorry, players speak very highly of his application in practice. A lot expected of him coming in here, even at a young age and even for a very short stint. Pond is called for the travel. And, you know, one thing they like, a comment that someone made to me, is he takes losses very badly as well. You know, and even here, you know, he's going to the States. This is just a short stint. Greater things perhaps expected of him in the future than the BBL, but very invested pas and passionate about his role in this team. And that's great to see that competitiveness. You know, he wants to win. That's, a, that's always a, a, you know, a really great quality to have. Keeling for three. That one doesn't go. Rebound, James. Game's quite you know, slowed down a lot, and I think that suits Glasgow uh, more so than what Surrey want to want to achieve. Surrey, I think by necessity, by definition, pushing the pace more since the departure of Ryan Richards a couple of weeks ago. They had when he came in. I think the game plan was slightly changed early season to accommodate him a bit more deliberate to use that presence inside. It almost going back to the, the system that they started with, if not the same personnel. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I, like I said, I think that for me, that Lacey James is the the glue to all of that. You know, he that defensive presence has really, really lifted uh, the, the, the scorchers. Good one, Jack Dombey. On for the first time this afternoon for Glasgow. Delph sits down and exhales for a moment. One of two from the line there. First foul goes against Teo Gedengby. Kalen Raftopoulos enters the fray for the first time. Martel McLemore returning at his side. I always do like the Bunyan Raftopoulos matchups. Yeah. Well, I think, I was going to just say that Raftopoulos was a, a great addition there for Surrey because it looked like literally the rocks have been packing the paint, kind of baiting Surrey to shoot the ball. Coetti inside gets the score. Good strong move and it's good to see him been watching uh, Quedi a lot, trying to watch his movement. Obviously coming off with a hamstring injury, that kind of explosive kind of piece. Again, something I never had to worry about ever <laughs> in my career. But that changes. You're saying that because you knew I'd say. <laughs> that changes speed. Uh, just trying to watch his movement and see how comfortable he is. Quedi, always pretty good from the foul line. Makes that one. One point game. Now, seven minutes to play in this second quarter. As I mentioned, you know the, the, the way the rocks are packing the paint, it's making it very difficult to drive. So bringing on someone like Rastopoulos who can shoot from range and maybe stretch the floor a little bit for for Surrey. Well, the corner bucket there from Martel Matlamore. There's one other game going on in the BBL already this afternoon. They've reached the half at the Copper Box. And Worcester Wolves with a 46 to 42 lead over London Lions. Interesting. Is Robinson back yet? You know. Yeah, with that broken nose, and absent again this afternoon. And DeAndre Liggins, of course, serving. I think serving a suspension isn't playing this afternoon. I think it was two technicals he got, so I don't think it, was, it should be a. Uh a suspension. So that's a, that's, that's one we have to. He's on the score sheet, so you can hear ah. he's not suspended, but isn't so far. Zero minutes. I shall consult the, the oracle that is Twitter ranging course. See if we can get some clarity to that. Some changes for Alliance today. Andre Lockhart, Kingsley Okoro, and Ed Lucas. 
all on the lineup today. Another strong take there by by Ogun Deng, but I felt that you know they had good position on defence. But again, that, that reaching reaching forward, you know, a lot of times it's it can be clean, a lot of times it's not. But it's it's giving the ref a call. You know, why why put yourself in that position to give the referee a call? And I always remember playing in Spain, no matter what, clean or not, <laughs> they always called that reaching the foul. Second foul against Kuwaiti. Good end beat, solid from the line. Five points, five rebounds. Keeling the catch and shoot from the wing. Kuwaiti open for the rebound. Well, it'd be harder to miss that one than make it. Five points for Kuwaiti. Sorry, they're accelerating at the other end. Walsh has it. Raftopoulos from this corner. Hell ball. I Arrow think, is in the direction of Surrey. I think Rav Topos was too open there. That was that was a shot. You know, you knew. In my mind that was in. Topolis shooting thirty three percent this season from three point range. And, and the thing point. is that thirty three percent is interesting because it's you know half of them are from like half court. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to see stats so he's just totally you know right beside the line. Duke, who has such speed up to the long two. Gravity not his friend. Walsh is up long, wanted it. Ponda almost with the interception. Surrey regain. Second chance opportunity. Will not fall for Connor Cashew. Ooh. Calling that as an unsportsmanlike -like foul. Topless arguing the case at half court. So Referee Chris Dodds. <laughs> Can't wait till fans back in this arena. Oh. <laughs> yeah, we heard some of the arguments there. Gareth Murray calling his team over for a huddle. That second foul against Cashot. He's seen something he wants to take the opportunity to change. Well, Kuwaiti awaits his turn at the line. <laughs> this is the first. Second goes. Two points in that possession for Glasgow as we reach the midway point in this second period. Backen holding off the pressure. Keeling, shot clocks at five. Jumped on me. Drives inside, gets the score. Ties the game at 29 apiece. At speed, the lead very short lived. Matt the more cancels it out. Well, I'm looking right now, it's a, a game of mismatches. You know, who's going to take advantage of that? They should be getting the ball into Jack Domi in the post down right now. Going at McLemore, and McLemore's going to just take him off the dribble. Found somewhere off the ball there. Lacey James returns in place of Connor Kasher. A slightly bigger lineup. Second foul given against Owen Dengby. Bunyan for three. Makes it. Johnny Bunyan on Friday night. There gives he is. the Rocks their first lead of this game. Five points. Oh, bullet train there coming through. That's that's what I love about Hicks. I, I I just think he is, even though he's going at speed, I think he's a very composed player. 
and I think that he's, to be fair, his style of play now, I think he's a lot better suited to um, playing over in Europe. You know, really kind of able to play off the ball, get the correct movement, get people into position. I think it was a technical on Pondo there, was it? Or was that time out? It's a second foul against Pondo. Hicks makes the first. Yeah, I mean, offensively, you look at Hicks from when he was back at Surrey in 2017, 2018. Offensive production, Don. And you think at times he struggled with a different kind of role coming back. I suppose when you come back to a club, you almost forget you know, things can change. It's not the same team. It's not the same players. System maybe tweaked a little I bit th as I well. Th I think a lot has to do with the players because, uh, you know, obviously playing where he's been playing, he's been playing with different types of bigs as well, you know. Bigs who are definitely going to roll every single time to the basket so he can kind of create the space and know, know how to thread the passes. So he's, he's having to adjust to playing with a different you know, different style of basketball now with different uh, different personnel. And But at the same time, I think he knows that at any point he can turn it up if he needs to. Yeah, that technical confirmed against Mpondo, who's on the ball now. Harassed under pressure. Double team came. So did the foul. A lot second of whistles foul. at this moment in time, isn't it? Yeah, second foul against McLemore. Really slowing the game down. It's Surrey in the bonus. And then Pondu gets his first points of this game. Ties it up at 34 apiece. Finish underneath from Lacey James. And he will go to the foul line. Once again, takes his tally into double figures. With 11 points a game high. Third foul against Kuwedi. He will be replaced by Gareth Murray. James to the line. One of three so far tonight from the foul strip. Uh, two of four. by Hicks. Murray wants it. Three on the shot clock. Murray opts for the three. Short though. Scramble underneath. And Murray regains. Pondo at speed. Gets the foul. And it is that sheer velocity <laughs> that causes so many problems. So quick but Really, really like to see Surrey's uh, press there. Really kind of disrupted the Glasgow Rocks. They didn't know what to do. And then they had no time on the clock left to kind of shoot. Thankfully, from a Glasgow Rocks perspective, they got the offensive rebound. But again, great glimpses from Surrey to show that you know, they've got an intent at the defensive end. Second foul against James. Perhaps the reason to prompt Surrey to send Cam Hildreth's back into the fray. Two of two for Mpondo. Julius Van Sowers replaces Boban Jack on me. Through and gets the score. <laughs> nice. Hex 
points to double figures now with 11 points in this game. Keenan almost lost it. Shot clock at 10. Ops for the three. Big Buries shot. it. Big shot. Ties the game up at 39 apiece. Game high 13 points for Christian Keeling. Magical <laughs> play there from Tony Hicks. Back and forth we go. Murray for three. Makes it Gareth Murray. Three from Hex, <laughs> it's a game of scores. <laughs> and this is where Queen Ruff topless his crystal ball before the game. I'm going to stop talking Coming about into defense. Its own. <laughs> <laughs> stop talking about defense. Yeah, I remind you before the game, Queen saying he thought this would be a game of the shooters. In the last few minutes, certainly so. Less than two minutes to play in this first half. But you know, the pressure. And Sowers, uh, look for the pass, couldn't get it through to the break. Teo time. Hedges couldn't convert the put back. Three on two here for Glasgow. Van Sowers on the break and makes it. Julius Van Sowers first score, tied once more. Dengby gets past two and gets the score. 7.6 rebounds for the Scorchers captain. Keeling at the other end. That one doesn't go. Well, I think if we were judging this by uh, dancing standards, we'd say points for artistic merit <laughs> for Cam Hildreth. As Bunyan sure. gets a second three Here in this, three, this quarter. His team in the lead. Still with Hildreth, wants these beautiful artistic moments of inspirational play, just have that little bit extra execution on them. He will be quite an astonishing player in the States. Here he is with a rebound underneath, gets it, puts it back in. Big rebound, I really like the ball movement there too. Tail made a great extra pass there. Macklemore short in rhythm, which allowed the team to kind of attack the offensive glass, knowing when the shot was coming. Shot clock is off. 12 seconds left in this second quarter. Murray will take it for two. They give it as a three, and he does give the Rocks a lead at the break. Glasgow head into the interval with a 50 to 48 lead. Christian Keeling leading the Rocks with 13, but a game high 16 points for Tony Hicks. Three minutes remaining. London, it should be said, short-handed tonight. DeAndre Liggins not playing, although he's on the score sheet. Justin Robinson unavailable still. But the, the Worcester Wolves taking full advantage. Jordan Williams with 23 points and 10 rebounds in that game. That really could be it for the championship race. You know, I was thinking it was, it was it already. So Obviously, Crandall's been out, but the, the, the riders have been handling business. So third quarter underway here Ron Delph has been handling business very well misses that first shot and Cyrus who had those two early fouls picks up the rebound intercepted there Connor Casho swing pass to Hicks makes it from the three point range I won't talk about points from turnovers but <laughs> <laughs> Another one there. Delph for the post, going up against Lacey James. Hook shot from Delph won't fall. No Amandre Rickman for the Surrey Scorchers this evening due to a fractured thumb. The long range bomb from Lacey James is converted. Rickman, uh, again, I think it was. End of January was the last time they, they were playing here. Brickman had a phenomenal game, TV game as well. It was uh, really impressive. On 
almost another turnover there, rescued by Glasgow. Two shots to come for Ronald Delph. That's the third, I think, on, on Casual. It is indeed. there the first one on goes slash into the paint was converted by Macklemore one run to begin the second half for Surrey. Dolph with the baseline conversion. You know, as we said on Friday night, you know, Van Sorge, he sees the passes, he sees the correct passes. Yeah, Surrey's biggest lead was seven in this game. Lots of by no more than two. Finish there from Hicks. That's so smooth. Eight of twelve from the field today. Murray's three point attempt is short. Van Sowers. I suspect will be picking up his third foul. Sorry, we're asking for an unsportsman like. Perhaps in retribution for the Earlier one received in the first half. But Bunyam is back defensively there, so I think that would be the, the counter argument. Killing wheels his way out of it. Ball movement in the perimeter from Glasgow. Shot clock is at seven. Bunyan has it. Looks for the handoff to Murray. Intercepted though by Surrey. Well, we've seen the spectacular many times from Lacey James. Stopped in his tracks there. And I'm wondering if James is smiling there because he, he thought that block was clean or just because he didn't get as high as he thought he would get on that. Killing with the foul. James he has 15 points in this game. To the foul line. Or so far this, e this evening. Early evening. Late afternoon. Mm -hmm. Two of four. Now three of five. Yeah, the Rocks have moved their games next month against Newcastle and London to three o'clock starts on a Sunday as against uh, Cheshire Phoenix as well on April the 11th so lots of mid-afternoon entertainment available on Sundays in April right here on the BBL player James stretching the gap to seven equals the biggest lead of the game from that first quarter Denby draws the foul. He has went at Van Sewers every single time he's caught the ball today and it's, it's developed a foul. Fourth foul against the Dutchman. Rock's assistant coach Sean Davidson calling for a change. Fraser Malcolm into the game as he did in the first half when Van Sowers picked up his two quick fouls in the first period. Shot from James, it won't fall. Delph has it, gives it to Murray. Bunyan waits in the corner, as does Fraser Malcolm in the other corner. Law pass instead inside to Delph, he finishes. You know what was great about that finish there? Delph, when he caught the ball, he didn't bring it down. You know, a lot of big players are used to bringing the ball down to kind of gather themselves to get back up, but he kept his length, kept the ball high, and got him a, a, an easy finish. Delph just one rebound short of another double double. Offensive foul is called. 
Second foul against Hicks for that push off and Bunyan. Bunyan harassed by Cashaw. Delph set the screen. Bunyan went around them. Murray through the middle. Gareth Murray into double figures. Cuts the gap to three points. Another smart play there by Murray. You know, he. The, the player was playing to kind of stop his shot, so he just knew his, he had to drive straight away. Okay, Dengbe from deep two point attempt rocks up numbers here. Three on one break. Malcolm to his right. Murray goes solo through the middle. Gareth Murray with 13 points in this game, and a timeout is called by Kriam Rothtopoulos with this one point lead for his team. Friday night slate. Big games done in Newcastle. A double header that you can watch on Sky Sports. Five o'clock start. London Lions facing Sheffield Sharks. And then the Rocks, the visitors to Newcastle are 7.30. And you can get those games live on Sky as well as here on the BBL player. Chances going missing. Three on weight. Malcolm with a handoff to Murray. Travel. Travel there. Slipped as he went in. A smile on his face. A sigh on Gareth Murray's face. It was one of those situations. I think he thought, maybe I'm going to dunk this. And I've been there before. <laughs> Mentally, you're telling yourself you're going to dunk it. But physically, you, you realise that, yeah. Yeah, we've all been there thinking <laughs> we're going up to dunk it. Matt Lamore for three, one go. Rebound from Cashot. Ever alert to a board. Look at Engby. has some room. Steps back and knocks down the jumper. Nice composed jump shot there, but again we talk about Cashot's rebounding ability. Just keeping the play alive. Killing the handoff to Delph, who can't finish. But gets the foul as he went in. Heads back to the line. Third foul against Lacey James. It has finished at the Copper Box. And it is an 84-72 to 72 victory for Worcester Wolves. Led by 23 points and 11 rebounds from Jordan Williams. Lions now 11-7. and seven. That's four losses more than Leicester Riders the games that they are having to catch up on. That's a long, long trophy hangover right there for, for, for Lions. Oh, so good in that trophy final against Plymouth, but injuries, disruption, not helping their cause. As Malcolm commits the foul on the shot. Leicester with eight games left, London with 12, but four defeats, even though the teams have to meet again. A lot to make up. That's that psychological thing, isn't it? You'd rather have the points in the bag. Yep. Matt Lamore makes his first. And the second. It's getting close here, but not getting ahead. Barry backs it down, goes solo. Doesn't get the roll off the backboard. Cashel steps back, buries it. That's his shot. Really loves that mid-range game. Second score of the game. Stretches Surrey's advantage to five. Three and a half minutes left in this third period. Bunyan has it on the wing. Bunyan goes solo. Lots of confidence. Can convert. How can it be against Bunyan? Gets through. Delph in the way. Travel. Travelling is called. Good defensive stand for Glasgow. <laughs> Full 
court pressure coming, but Murray in plenty of space hands it back to Bunyan. Takes the three. Malcolm chased down the rebound, but just couldn't get his hands on it. Good defense and good hustle there by Malcolm. Which is what you want when you're a player coming off the bench and you want to try and make an impression. It's you know it's chasing down those loose balls and, and putting yeah, your body out there. Yeah, and playing through your mistakes as well. You know, I, I think if you're if you're if you're showing that effort and that willingness. It makes up for those little intricate mistakes you were making, you know, like you had the little uh, travel down the other end the, on the break. Evan Walsh in for Surrey. Hex in the corner. Passed up on the three, gives it to Macklemore, who takes the three. And that was a great contest again there by Malcolm. Delph now with another double double. Walsh guarding Keeling, they go to Murray. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Malcolm thought about the three. And yet get his opportunity inside to Delph who throws it in. That was miscommunication there by the Scorchers. They, you know, they, they were switching everything but forgot to switch back and left there wide open. Good recognition by Bunyan though. 15 points for Delph in the last two minutes of this period. Terrifically competitive game. Daring Hicks, Hicks accepting the shot. Malcolm the catch and shoot. Sorry, come away with it. Hicks has help. Slips it off. Finish from Cashot. Six points and six rebounds for the former Sharks guard. Gets his own rebound, tips it out to Keeling. Bunyan with the save. Shot clock at eight. Murray slashes, gets it. Great take there. By the vet. Still got a spring in his step, does Gareth Murray. Evan Walsh. Hicks. Two shot, almost long two. Five point gap, couple of seconds differential between shot clock and game clock here as we approach the end of the third quarter. Will be a rocks ball. 17.6 seconds remaining. Healing skipped Ryan Delph foul is drawn though. Third foul against Tony Hicks. Scorchers not yet in the bonus. Dean Warnless re will return. Lacey James perhaps to guard him against fouls. Takes an extended breather. Wallace immediately guarding Delph. Shot clock is off. Keeling swing past to Delft, takes a three. Won't go. Bunyan got the rebound. Quarter ends. Surrey lead Glasgow 70 to 65. Tony Hicks leading all scores with 23 points. In a piece for Murray and Delft, who has 11 rebounds on top of that. But they're going to add 0.6 seconds. <laughs> Unlikely. And now we finish the third quarter. Um, I mean, it's been a shooter's game. It's all set up to be a shooter's fourth quarter. Yeah, I, I always laugh because you know, there's a lot of shooters out there, but there's not a lot of scorers. Plenty of great action next weekend. If you're a Scorchers fan, you can join our good chum, Nile Gray, and Brian Williams for that game against Plymouth Raiders Friday night, 6 o'clock. There's your Friday sorted. 
unless you want to watch the other games on Friday. Kieran, there are other games are available. And you can see Kieran as well if you so wish. Fourth quarter underway. Walsh in traffic, Delph in his way. The disruptor there. Walsh goes the up and under. Terrific finish from Evan Walsh. He wasn't giving up. I was looking for making the right decision. Going at the seven footer <laughs> was probably the wrong decision at the time, but you know, he made up for that. Walsh's first score. And another lost possession for Glasgow. Walsh on the break. Goes solo, feeling the confidence. The floater drops in. Biggest lead of the game. Not oh, for Scorchers. Rocks in need of a response. Murray. The man to try and catalyse it. Kick out to Malcolm from the corner. Short though. Murray gets it to Keeling who lays it in. Great persistence there from Gareth Murray. Keeley now on 14 points as well. Nice Hicks. pass. Miscommunication there. Dean Wanless the beneficiary. 6-2 run to Surrey at the start of this period. Bunyan on the trail. Goes inside. He was looking for the offensive board. Instead it's Malcolm. He got it and then collided. <laughs> Score is given and a little wipe required on the floor. I mean, when you look at how the game's evolved from a guard perspective, getting a dump off pass into the paint, right? In this day and age, it's either a dunk, which we're, we're probably not going to see, or a, a little floater. You know, you can't actually really attack the basket the same way there. You know, maybe Evan Walsh was in the, in, in the, in the cylinder there that they didn't draw the, draw the charge, but you know, that's a charge waiting to happen. Seven point ball game, eight minutes left. Wallace is lurking on the right corner. Hicks goes through the middle, kicks it out. Shot clock's at five. Make from Martel McLemore from Glasgow. Call timeout. To talk that one over. Glasgow in need of some momentum. Um, let's talk about championship. Stepped up, finding his feet, kind of finding the, the team dynamic. But I, I believe that, you know, having a guard like Connor Washington that you and call your backup. He's not a backup. He's a player who can deliver, and they have so many players in that position. So um, I'm really, really comfortable with what Leicester have to bring. Delph backing down one less. Can't shake him off. Does give away the foul eventually. Does the Scorchers forward his second foul. Again, I'm, I'm looking at just m making it easy for the referee there. You know that there's a lot of unnecessary contact at the time. Bunyan for three. Yeah, we're almost expecting them to go. Break from Cashaw. Bunyan sportingly picks him up. It's really, really impressive to watch. As soon as the Scorchers uh, secure a rebound, they are off. Their wings are running relentlessly at speed every single time. And the Rocks are really struggling with that and getting back. Well, I suppose it is that thing. Of the, if you talk, you talk about the evolution of the game, there's you know, lots of teams now that that's, that's the first priority. You know, and again, even for defences as well, you're not chasing the offensive rebound anymore. You're prioritising getting back on defence. Mm -hmm. And that's it. You know, we... You know, most teams I've played in, it's either two back or one back, depending on how great the, the guard was at rebounding. Uh, but that defensive balance is crucial. And being able to slow the, the attacking team down to make sure that they can't get out like that is, is, is a necessity. Biggest lead of the game. No a hell by Surrey. away. Keeling has recovered. Three in the shot clock. Goes in in traffic. Gets his own rebound. Makes it. Christian Keeling. 17 points. Seven rebounds. Eight points the gap. Macklemore a response though in kind. He is hot right now. 
No, the, uh, the best defense in him right now is to deny him the ball. Yeah, Matt Lamore has 15 points. Fraser Markham struggling from deep. Walsh inside, gets the bucket, gets the bonus. Great finish there by the young guy. Signaled. That's Gareth Murray. One. Oh, he's just did a leggings. Inject them from the game. Oh no. Was that a warning? I think it was. Murray's first. So from what we're hearing there, the basket was good. A technical, second technical foul has been cancelled off. And a retake of that free throw, which is missed once again by Tony Hicks. So, who were the technicals on? The first one was on. Because that's what makes the difference. If it was on the same person. Well, the first one was on Gareth Murray, that much we know. Of course, the angle where we're at here is not always conducive to seeing what the referees are signalling. Anyway, we're back underway. And the Scorchers have extended the lead. In the midst of this, Murray for three, makes it, there's a response. Gareth Murray, 18 points in the game. Hicks, that speed, makes it. Tony Hicks, 25 points. Surrey ball. Glasgow ball, in fact. Pull these. Six to play. Back to our cut. Caitlin couldn't finish. It was a well executed play as well. Great vision from Delph. Just needed the finish. That's the finish from Martel McLemore. I told you. <laughs> you cannot let this guy catch the ball this moment in time. 18 points for him. here so long this is third season Missouri is first a decade ago now a hook shot from Keeling won't convert Walsh doesn't get it Rock's hanging on here by their fingertips Bunyan is outside Malcolm on the trail gets it to Delph who drew the foul and gets a bucket Walsh picking up his first foul of the game. Delft to the line. It's actually a really good finish there. You know, uh, Walsh took a real good swing at the ball. Delft cocked it back and still obviously had the length to make sure they finished that. And you feel in a sense how you know, Delft tonight, he's been a facilitator at times, but perhaps should be looking more for him inside in the paint. I, I think he was actually forced out of the paint. I, I, you know, early on, I, this would be a, you know, the, a kind of like Wanless and Lacey James are real physical players, making sure that they're, they're, they're fighting in that the post position because they, they understand if they get down down low, it's going to be very very hard to stop. And I guess that's the gift of curse of being able to shoot the ball <laughs> because you, when you get forced out, you might. You know, settle in, in essence because you know you're capable of making those outside shots. Travelling the call there, Lacey James checking back into the game. In place of Dean Wallace had a very nice cameo there. 12 points the gap, game not over. Rocks need a run. Keelan guarded by Matt Lamore. Came off his foot. Trying to do everything in the end, achieve nothing. Cash 
Bradshaw short on that one. Deflected ball. Marion Barnes gets it to Bunyan. Has some room there. Feeds to Delph. Inside, stuffs it in. There you go, he was listening to you, Mark. Go inside, you see? Okay. It's all requests under here at the Emirates Arena. Cut inside from the on fire, Evan Walsh. Smart play again. Great two way player. Product of the Oakland's development system. Here he is again. This time, got the foul. Despite the uh, impressions of being an angel from Johnny Bunyan. <laughs> Can lip read that one as he picks up his fourth foul. Never touched some gov. Was nowhere near him. Wasn't me. Referees beg to differ. Ugly Dengby returns. Waltz to the line. First one is good. As is the second. Every score here, Surrey, edging closer to this victory. Significant victory. Murray unleashes. Scramble underneath. James with the board, sorry, lose it though. Bullet pass to Keeling, underneath. Draws the foul, can't get the finish though, goes to the line. Two shots to come for Christian Keeling. They're saying he may have a cut just from the, the signals out there. And Pondo checks back in. Yeah, Keeling has gone over to see the medical team here at the Emirates Arena. And Pondo will replace him at the foul line. And again, I think this is the first sub of this, this half. Very similar to the strategy from, from Friday night. Yeah, Keeling getting some attention on his wrist. Bam did put on. No, well, actually, I think Brian Sowers was off. For Malcolm. Oh. Hondo, a good replacement on that one. And on the second, six points for him. All of his points coming from a three through line today. 12 point game, 3 to play. Hicks. Fall. Sportsman like foul is called by the officials. A fourth foul of the game against Tony Hicks. Substitutions for Glasgow. Keeling prepares to come back in, having been patched up. Was that an unsportsman like there on Hicks? Is that his second unsportsman like? Or was the first one on Cashaw? The first one was on Cashaw. Pondo will go back to the line, which is why Keeling hasn't returned. First miss of the day. Six of seven now from the line. Rocks need every point they can get just now. Second one goes. Opportunity lost. Keeling returns. Rocks 
so good from the far line on late 17 of 22 this afternoon. Wait some help, but comes in the form of Ron Delph. Shot clock is at two. Keeling with the floater on the run. Kanko gets his own rebound. Put back made by Christian Keeling. And that's why they wanted him back in the action so quickly. The amount of times he has done that tonight, he missed the, the uh, initial one, followed up. Just one rebound as a result of that, short <laughs> of a double double. 19 points, nine boards. Feed inside taken by James is foul before he can get the shot off I said the refs will consult whether that was a shooting foul or not it's a shooting foul I think they were wanting it to be an unsportsmanlike foul the problem right now I think from a study perspective they're at, they've got a 10 point cushion they do not need to be riling these referees up and fighting for things that they don't you know, they don't need they've got two shots here well the rocks no, and the bonus for fouls so James, he has 17 points in this game, takes his tally to 18. Season high for the American in points. And now a 19. Murray for three. Another possession. Closer for Surrey. Into the final two minutes of the game. And this is where I think Oaken Ding because the switch back now. James comes up top. Running interference now under the basket. Lurking. Hicks tried to find him as the shock off expired. Healing off balance. Down for the tip there. Oh, what a rebound there by Spoken Dengby. That will send Surrey back to the line. We have two games for Glasgow Rocks next weekend. Friday night, you can catch Kieran and all the Sky Sports crew when the Rocks travel to Newcastle. A 7.30 tip on that one on Friday. That's after a first part of a double header on TV between London and Sheffield and then next Sunday the Rocks will be back here in action when the visitors will be Bristol Flyers 3 p.m. game there and you'll have that live here right on the BBL player Mary the step back won't fall Five on the shot clock, no rush. <laughs> a very <laughs> casual make there indeed from Tony Hicks. He's like, why are you playing off me? <laughs> I can make that shot. Hicks, season high of 28 points. Malcolm goes to Keeling. Sorry, almost at the magical 100. Well... 30 seconds left, 20 on the shot clock. We'll have to take at least one shot here. May just be a lob, Casho, and no rush whatsoever. May just run this down as a shot clock violation. Yes, they will. Don't get to see that often. Usually someone will take a shot. I'm taking that shot. I'm not going to turn over for that. Well, Hicks, the game leader tonight, 28 points for him James and McLemore with 19 and 18 respectively the Rocks led by 20 points and 12 rebounds from Ron Delph but it is the Surrey Scorchers who take the victory here 99 to 83 
Surrey improving their record to 7-12. and 12. They stay 10th in the league tonight, but now level.